Hi, this is Tim and Joel. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumb Asses. Hi, Joel. We're here for another episode. Um, we've got a really cool topic today that I'm pretty excited about, and it's really around scent control. If you are not in archery season right now, particularly in Iowa, um, for those shotgun hunters, this will be particularly uh, advantageous. And for you bow hunters that'll, who have not tagged out yet, hopefully you can use this uh Use this for the, for your rest of your season, but before we get to that, Joel, um, what have you been doing this past week? Yeah, I was just going to say, Tim, no one likes a stinky hunter, right? So, including <laughs> deer. So that's kind of what the whole episode's about. Um, what have I been up to? So I'm, I'm searching for anything other than hunting because it just feels like I'm in the hunting grind. Um, which may not come off very positive, and that's just because I haven't had any. A lot of positive things from my hunting yet so it's been tough i'm seeing some deer but it's been an, as we talked about um the last couple of days this has just been an odd season for me so far um and again what we talked about last night things can, a season can change in three minutes right that's right um so it's it's i'm just in the grind right now but um i did um you know i've been talking about winterizing this damn boat and uh, so that was kind of a sad thing this week. Uh, the wife helped me put the final tarp on, and and uh, the boat is the boat is winterized. Awesome. So um, just got check on it every once in a while, and uh, you know should be good to go in the spring and uh, start it up, and away we go. Um, and then I had a birthday in the family. Uh, my uh, grandson uh, Jonah, shout out to Jonah here, turned four. So uh, four year old dumbass out there running around in. Uh, in uh, in Iowa somewhere, so it's fun. He's a good kid, and I had to go up and go, you know, spend some celebration time with him. Well, you had a marriage too. I mean, you had a yeah. Um, two weeks ago, my son got married, and uh, yeah, so we've got a lot of life changes. It's this has kind of been odd with the coronavirus. You know, I know, you know, it, uh, it it's odd for everybody, but uh, boy, when it comes to weddings and birthdays and Thanksgivings coming up and the holidays. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just not the same. Just not the same. I would agree. Yeah. But uh, those, those are what I've been up to. And, and you know, uh, you know, hunting, you know, if we we're shooting this at the cabin right now. And uh, I, it's been a long time since I've seen home. You know, I've been at the cabin for a while and, uh, you know, starting to grow some gristle. And I'm, I can't wait to get my deer because this is starting to drive me nuts. Yeah, my so. wife's ready to for ours to get taken off. Yeah. Too. Yeah, it's... It's uh, so anyway, help me out, dear. You know, help help me and my wife out. Let me shave. So uh, let's talk. I mean, you brought up about the season. Um, I mean, for those folks that aren't from Iowa, I mean, talk about the season and what's made it so unique this year. Yeah, I mean, in in Iowa, the bow season opens October one, and uh, you know, depending on who you talk to, it's late October, Halloween. First week in November, second week in November is the rut and, you know, deer moving and daylight and and all the things that come with that. But, um, you know, two weeks ago, um, it was cold temperatures, which was perfect right around Halloween time frame, uh, but didn't really have an impact on the deer. I didn't see that anyway. Um, and then last week it was like literally 75 degrees, right? Record temperatures. I think we set a record that was set in 1909 for a week for a week. Yeah. 75 degrees. And, um, then last couple of days it's rained and, uh, and now it's a little bit cooler. I would say normal November temperatures around 50, 45 to 50. So I think with the rut in there and then with the temperatures going up and down, um, and then coupled with where I'm hunting, there's still a lot of corn in, which uh, uh, which is not helping me out. Yeah, so you I, have a lot of corn. 
I think it's just uh, a combination of things. Again, I don't want to use those as excuses. I just am um, trying to figure it out so I learn from it myself. And uh, But uh, the weather has just been odd. Yeah, I would probably put, I mean, 300 plus acres of corn around your property is still in. It, it's kind of some of the only corn that's still left in yeah. southern Iowa here. So I don't know what's going on. But, uh, but, but your food plot looks great. When the corn does come out, the food plot's ready to go because, uh, you know, it's it, uh, it's gotten a lot of rain, a lot of heat and sun, believe it or not, still yeah. growing. And, uh, you know, the deer really haven't been hitting it that hard because uh, they've had corn to eat. And you've got a brassica blend, and I'll bet it's what, I mean, it looks from a distance, looks about knee high. Close? Yeah, it's in some places, it's knee high. It's got some uh, big, big purple top uh, radishes in there and a little bit of everything. And it, it looks great. I, I always call it, I always say it looks prehistoric because it's so big and big bulbs and everything looks out of proportion. But uh, the deer love it and they come in and eat those tops off. And then when it freezes, they'll come in and eat those bulbs up. And I'm hoping I'm the only show in town by then. Yeah, it's going to look great. That'd be nice. Uh, so a little bit about what I've been doing this week. Uh, so past episodes, we put in uh, winter rye. And this heat obviously was great for that. So uh, I went down and looked at it just real quick like. And um, it's about two inches tall. Now uh, a little FYI, I broadcast two acres. And the other five acres I drilled with my new grain drill that we talked about in that episode. And the grain drill planting is way outperforming the broadcast. So just passing along a little learning, it was a kind of an aha for me. Um, but that's exciting because, you know, first time you use something and there's grain involved and it worked really no turning back if it goes south. Right. That's uh, right. So it looks like success. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. I've been doing a lot of hunting. We've talked that, so I won't go into, I'm having similar, similar issues. You know, I mean, even this year with, uh, uh the full moon was on Halloween night and I was like, this is going to be great. And I mean, depending on who you listen to, uh, four days prior and four days after a full moon are supposed to be really great hunting. And, uh, but we had heat that 70 plus degrees for like seven days and uh while i've seen bucks and passed on bucks um i've seen a couple of four-year-olds been able to grunt them in but uh i passed on them there's i'm waiting for something something different and uh but i wouldn't say it's been like raging a raging rut like we've seen in the past. Yeah, I agree. And, and also, let's keep it in perspective, right, Tim? Is, is um, We've got some targeted bucks that we're really trying to hone in on. And I think both of us, if we wanted to fill a tag, could have filled a tag with a good deer, mm -hmm. right? Um, but um, you got to pass on some deer to get... If you want to shoot a big deer, you got to pass on some deer. And that's, that's, right. that's where we're sitting today. That's right. Right? So Not everybody. I mean, and we're meat hunters, too. But there's a lot of there's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, a lot of time and more seasons out, outside of bow hunting. Not not that we should be thinking that, but uh, uh, yeah, enough of hunting. I'm getting dis I'm getting dis. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else again. What else I've been doing? Uh, so I bought some wood, some rough cut oak. Bought it on uh, Facebook Marketplace. Got a great deal from a gentleman out in Pella, Iowa. Got it all rough cut. And so uh, I've been cutting and planing, cutting it to size, getting it planed, also putting a straight edge on it. He gave us a great, a really great deal on it, uh, some beautiful wood. Um, so, and I've just got that stained. So then you've been helping me with build a new vanity for our bathroom, part of our renovation. But with that, I think that's enough of what we've been doing. Let's get into our into our topic. I know our listeners are excited to hear this, and our topic's really around scent control for hunting. And so with that, uh, we have a plethora of products that we're going to share, and we're going to talk to you about what we do, what our routine, some of the products, and how we kind of categorize them. And, uh, and then we'll be interested in any questions, comments that you have 
um, on, on scent control. Cause I, I mean, I, I don't know about you, Joel for scent control for me is an evolving topic. And, uh, I, year in year out, I don't do the same thing. I tweak it always just a little bit. Yeah. Not only evolving, but the technology around scent control seems to change and the, and the strategies and theories behind it, um, change at least again for me every year. Um, and by no means do we, are we sponsored by any of these products and, you know, we'll be open and honest um, when we do review some of these products, what the pros and cons to, or if we like them or we don't like them. But, uh, you know, we're not, you know, we're not going to, we're going to give you an honest approach of how we've used these product and what they work for us. Okay. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Where so do you want to start, Tim? Let's first start about masking. Okay. Right. So when we talk masking, we're talking, how do we mask scent out in the field? Right. And first off, I guess I should take a step back. First off, it starts really with the wind. Right. No matter what we do, I don't believe we can completely eliminate all of human scent out in the field. We can do a pretty good job. But at the end of the day, wind is the controlling element with with uh, the direction the deer come from uh, as far as, hey, are they going to be able to get on to us yeah yeah i mean i think that's the number one thing and and um i i think if someone and you hear about products you know hey it doesn't the wind doesn't matter and and um i think there are products out there that help you um in those situations but uh i'll never believe that there's a anything ever that's gonna totally eliminate your scent from a deer smelling you downwind yeah and then thermals on top of that, right? So thermals, the other piece. Uh, again, we could we could probably do an episode just on on thermals and how to hunt with thermals, and that's the upward and downward drafts. Um, but those two items are really key elements as far as um, deciding, hey, what stand you're going to hunt. Um, but with that, let's go into let's go into masking. Masking. <laughs> So we, we've broken down what we do for scent control into three elements, masking, elimination, and then attractants. Um, and so what we're going to go into is masking first. And so, Joel, we've got, yeah, we've got these scent control sticks. So tell us a little bit about those, Joel. You know, I picked them up um, at a... Uh... I picked them up at a antique store actually in town, but they have a little hunting section there. And uh, I, I really like the idea that they're small in a chapstick uh, format. And uh, one, the price was right. And then two is pretty unique uh, uh, smells to them. They're, they're um, like, it has smoke. Smoke's one of the, which I don't think I would use. Um, but acorns and pine and dirt and dirt. Yeah. Dirt. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, so, um, I've used a, a couple of these and they, they are very, uh, noticeable, you know, they're not, uh, as waxy as I thought they would be and, and neutral as I thought they would be. They really are very pronounced. So, you know, I'm, I think it's a little bit of a gimmicky thing type thing but um you know for the price i paid for them and what you get for them in the quantity form it uh it, it's it was pretty good value for me and it's something you can try right i mean so inexpensive try it see if it works if it doesn't work you're really not out that much yeah yeah and there's a couple other things we're going to talk about that i'm an advocate of and i wish they would maybe consider putting it in a this chat i think this chap stick form is, is, is a really neat format to apply the products. Um, so I think that's the biggest takeaway that I'm getting from this product is that, that waxy chapstick form versus liquid or spray um, really comes in handy. So what do you do with that, Joel? I mean, so... Yeah, you know, I, use use it it? On, I use it on trees. So when I get in around my tree stand, I'll go and go around my tree stand. And when I get up in my tree stand, I'll just kind of rub some up on the bark. And, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm shocked and surprised, uh, you know, the, the strength of it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Nice stuff. All right. Product so I, number one. 
So our next product we've got is a continuous spray by Primos. Again, not a sponsor. Yet. Yet. Yeah. Love Primos products. Yeah, so do I. Some of my best cameras. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so aerosol spray. Um, what I like about this, again, from a container and application standpoint, is you can spray it at any angle, including upside down. And it's a really super fine mist, not not a stream that comes out. Um, but it's a it's a neutral spray. Um, and what I, what I mean by that is is it's there really isn't any smell to it. It's supposed to absorb human scent or whatever's on you and uh, and cover it up. And I've used that. I don't know how you use that. I've used that in uh, in my box blinds, and uh, it it seems to stick around a little bit, so the wind doesn't capture it. And that's why I like it in those box blinds because uh, it seems to cover up whatever scent I may have up in there. I don't know about yourself. Yeah, yeah, I, I do use it, and I I use it all a lot. Um, I, what I again, what I really like about the package on here is it's pretty good size, small enough but big enough. And then uh, the cap locks on this, so you can't accidentally push it. And uh, it, so there's just some unique, again, some functionality around the packaging that uh, that makes a lot of sense with this. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So our next one, we've got we've got kind of two. So I'm going to put those out here for both of them, right? And it's it's nose jammer. So one's a body wash, and the other one's a spray. And uh, would you like to talk about them? We're both going to talk about this one. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think it's safe to say we're we're um, we are advocates of nose jammer. Yeah. Um, what three three four years now? Yep, three four years ago. And if you haven't used nose jammer, it's not like a nose scent or something that you spray and you're not going to smell anything. This actually smells good. It smells like an air fresher and you spray in your house. Yeah, vanilla, kind of vanilla ish, right? Yeah. Um, the reading the label. And I guess I believe it um, because I've seen it is uh, it contains an ingredient that um, when an animal, this case a deer, smells this, it locks up their sensories that um, that's kind of all they can smell. And it and then they can't smell you or they can't smell other things. And um, I, I'm a big advocate. Of, I use it every time I go out hunting and um I've seen it work. You know, I've seen deer come in and it's not like they're not going to smell, like smell something. They'll smell this, but what it does is they lock it up and they'll even take their not, their nose, uh, tongue in, in their, stick their tongue in their nose and uh, try to, they, they can sense something's out there, but they can't smell it. And uh, that's exactly what you're looking for from a hunting standpoint. Yep. I had an, ex uh, so I do use this. We'll talk more about routines here in a little bit, but, uh, I used this this morning and I had a doe come right up behind where I had used that. And she was looking right up me at my stand. So she knew I was, something was different, but I saw right where I had used it. And I go, there is no way you're going to smell me. And she, she never did. Um, I will talk about this body wash and shampoo. I, I used that. Uh, I used to use it. Um, Again, I tweak my approaches every year. I used to use it for body wash and then wash my hair. And what I found was is um, they would smell me. Now, they wouldn't smell my human scent, but they would smell the, the nose jammer and know exactly where I was at but not know what I was. And uh, I have yet to use that this year. And uh, I, I don't think I'm going to, but that could change. We'll see. Um, but both really effective at masking excuse me yeah masking your your scent yeah i suppose i'm sitting here thinking tim is I, I suppose if you use this what i've got to be careful of using a lot that if they associate you know the smell that nose jammer puts off to humans to humans um then then it's just they just will smell me to begin with right that's but, right uh, so far that's not the case and it's it's really been the most effective thing i've used in my hunting life um, how about you? Is that, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 It's uh it's part of my routine. Yeah. Cool. Anyway, again, not sponsored, uh, but we're believers. Yeah. So with that, our, our next one, well, you know what? There are a couple other things we can do to mask our scent. Um, I have a friend of mine who uses cedar. 
fresh cut cedar, though you put branches or fresh cut cedar with regards to uh, logs, and they'll put all their gear into a tub with this cedar to help mask their scent. Um, do you know of anything else? Smart. What am I uh, smart. Um, I have used cedar too. I've actually went out and cut some brush and needles off some cedar trees in the cabin here. Um, we, we have a hunting closet set up for our clothes and, um, and put those in there and it worked, worked great for a short period of time, short period of time, three to six months. And then, you know, the, the scent dissipates, and then I got to tell you, it's a mess cleaning up uh, the needles sure. from the branches. So I went to the cut cut pieces of cedar, Tim, and also, and I, I think it helps. Again, I think it's one of those things you got to really refresh in every three, six months uh, moving forward. You know, when you and I first started hunting, uh, what, was the, what was the sense we used uh, to help mask our scent? Well, I, I mean... Uh, red fox urine was red one. Fox. I think, in my opinion, the worst. It was bad. Was there? I don't think we ever used skunk. I don't think, but you, that was out there. And uh, what was the other raccoon. one? Raccoon. Raccoon urine. Raccoon urine. All three of them were bad, but uh, we. I think we used the red red fox urine the most, and uh, it it does cover you up. But again, it's that same conversation that we had on Nose Jammer. It, the deer are definitely going to smell that. And, um, you know, I've had, it, it's kind of alert to them, right? Sure. How often do they smell raccoon urine or fox urine. red fox urine? Because uh, I've busted a lot of deer um, and I know they didn't smell me. They smelled the scent. You know, as bad as it smelled, the sad part is, is when you're out in your stand and you had that fox urine, uh, after a while, it would actually start, you'd start to get used to it. I yeah. mean, and it's like, how sick is that? <laughs> That's bad. And uh, I got to tell you, for Mr. and Mrs. or for the Mrs. dumbasses out there, they're not happy about that. No. They're not happy about that. All right. So I think that covers masking for us. I know there's some people that use cedar as well, but I mean, you know, those types of things for masking your scent. And again, this is not meant to be an exclusive. It's just, we're just walking through how we approach. Uh, scent control yeah i mean let's let's toss out uh you know challenge a challenge for this episode uh in your comments send us comments on what you used master scent uh for deer hunting because i know there's a lot of uh creative things out there and uh, so it'd be interesting to see some of those you know what let's let's uh let's even up the challenge uh for those who uh want to enter this challenge um we'll give you uh 30 days since the publish of this video and you can give us your suggestions via via comments in our youtube video or send us an email in an email i'm um, at at uh, midwest hunting and outdoors at gmail.com and the winner that we pick will ship off a two dumbass hat oh my gosh and man uh, you're and you know what? While we're doing it, let's throw in a koozie. How about that? Yep. So do it for the koozie, do it for the the hat. So what I heard was the challenge is, is uh, we get to determine what the best um, masking agents used by deer hunters uh, via comments, and you get a hat and a koozie to go with it. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's move into our next category which is elimination okay
Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.